Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to another interview. I'm Michael from Geek Vibes Nation, and today I'm joined by Kevin Chamberlain and Sam Kite. How are you guys doing? We're great. Yeah. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, so we're here to talk about some of the TikToks you guys have been doing over on TikTok. But before we get into that, could you guys um, talk a little bit about yourselves for our audience so they have a better idea of who you are and how you started working together? Um, well, uh, I, I basically uh, have been in the acting business since I graduated from college from Rutgers University in 85. And I'm basically a Broadway actor, but I do a lot of TV and film as well. And your, your audience might know me from Disney Channel when they were growing up on Jesse. And uh, my first big film was Die Hard with a Vengeance. And um, then and when I was in New York doing Adam's Family, the musical on Broadway, um, I met Sam and he is a, in digital advertising. And we hit it off and became great friends. And um, he, he moved out to Los Angeles not soon after um, uh, Adam's family. And he uh, and I have been started collaborating on, um, on my social media. It started with Twitter and Instagram. And then we moved over to uh, TikTok right when Biden won. Um, we made a... Um, uh, a Biden Harris video using the uh, theme song from Jesse. <laughs> and then um, we started uh, getting a lot of attention with Ratatouille, the musical. And then we started doing um, some more musical um, videos, especially like um, our first one really was Turtlenecks and Blazers, mm -hmm. which was written by another guy uh, named uh, Austin Archer. And um, Mustache Respect, and then um, uh, because of Sam's uh, love of uh, comic books and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, uh, his, his passion for that and my newfound passion really um, got us uh, writing the song, I Want to Be in a Marvel Movie, which is, you know, ultimately, I was actually up for a Marvel movie <laughs> series recently and, um, oh. and, 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 uh, and I, I it was between me and another guy, and the other guy got it. And uh, and so uh, I really would love to be in a Marvel movie. And so that passion came into the song. And uh, I, I come from musical theater roots. And so I wanted to write an I Want song, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a classic I Want song. So, um, but it's been really fun collaborating with Sam. And um, uh, and he is my director and producer and and uh, writer. Give yourself a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to follow all that. Um, uh, yeah, I I work in digital advertising. Um, I work for an agency called Part Four that we do a lot of social and digital stuff for Disney and Marvel and other and other film studios and. So my experience, you know, for like coming up with TikToks for brands, I kind of started to do for Kevin. And I was just like, hey, you know, your entire audience of fans are all on TikTok. So that's, we should just make fun videos together. And I had, I had produced a, a feature film and a couple of short films that were in film festivals. And so I really wanted to direct more. So Kevin let me direct some stuff and then it started going viral and then we started hitting like millions and millions of people and so we kept doing it and then it just kind of built he went I think he got a million followers overnight overnight uh, yeah our first TikTok video I think it was the very first one he wasn't verified it was just that we just posted it and then we shared it on his Instagram which he had some following on and then, yeah, it just kind of went viral overnight. And then we got like 20 million views in like a couple of days Goodness. With, with that TikTok. And so it, it, we were like, I guess we're onto something. So we kept making stuff. And, and since we started, we started in November. And then we, when Ratatouille, the musical was coming out, uh, my, my boss actually sent me a message and was like, you guys, 
should pay attention to this Ratatouille the musical thing. It's kind of fun on happening on TikTok. So I, I got Kevin to write his song for it. And then that hit like 5 million people. And then Ratatouille the musical started becoming like an even bigger thing. And then the New York Times started calling and CBS This Morning started calling. And so Kevin kind of was the first celebrity to really uh, kind of engage with a TikTok trend that way. Mm -hmm. and uh and because of his musical theater roots and his, he has three three tony nominations so he was kind of instantly blasted the front of it and and then it happened and it became a whole big thing and now it's probably going to be nominated for an emmy so that was like just a thing we did you know just in the afternoon during the pandemic and it became into this whole big thing so i'm hoping that the marvel movie song gets him a part in a Marvel movie, to be honest. Me too. I think that'd be really fun. And kind of on that note, um, if Kevin Feige called you today, Kevin, and offered you any role you wanted, what's like the pie in the sky role? Kingpin. Kingpin. Oh, oh, that'd be good. <laughs> oh. I agree. Um, or the on, thing. Or the thing. <laughs> yeah. Have to get back to the gym a little. Or bit. Captain Marvel's dad. It doesn't really matter, right? You're just anything. I'm I'm very um, as a character actor. You know, I'm, I can I can play anything. That's the wonderful thing about being a character. And the older act, older I get, the more roles it seems are available for me. Really? Yeah. Yep. Unlike you know the 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 lead handsome men who as they age. You know, they, they kind of age out of their type and become character men. I've just been a character actor my whole life. <laughs> um, what was what was the experience making the the Marvel TikTok like? Like, um, how long did it take you guys to make it? Um, we started writing the song first, and um, that was um, it, from from writing the, the song to um, a, the final cut it was about two months two months yeah and uh, most of that was post-production on the video uh, uh we wrote the song in like 45 minutes just randomly on like a saturday afternoon because kevin had been up for this part in this marvel show and didn't get it and we wanted to write uh another a new song because we had written there was a death hoax about kevin and a lot of our comments on tiktok were all like i thought you were dead aren't you dead bro and so, and so we wrote a song about it called I'm Not Dead, where he literally is like all the comments flash up on the screen and he like sings this kind of Broadway number about he's alive, he's still here. And it got kind of a lot of attention. So I was like, hey, we should just start writing more songs together. And we were working on a, a story, a song idea. And then he said, you know, I just want to do something really personal. Like I want to be in a Marvel movie. And I was like, yes. And then so we just made it a love letter to Marvel kind of and and the video we we kind of broke the song down for our beats and figured out you know we already had the plot kind of built out in the song with the Thor's hammer and the Lois and Clark bit so we kind of knew how we were going to shoot it but then all of the transitions are specific references to Marvel you know there's an ash away from Infinity War there's the Ant-Man shrink there's a color change from WandaVision. So those are all kind of little references to Marvel things visually. Uh, what's the reaction been like so far to the video? Uh, it's been incredible. Um, and an outpouring of, I wish everyone had a direct line to the Marvel casting directors because apparently every one of my comments is like, dude, you need to be in a Marvel movie. <laughs> Why haven't they cast you yet? Yeah, I hope Sarah Finn listens to this um, interview <laughs> and goes and watches the video. I want to talk about the Ratatouille musical for a second. Were you both involved with that? Yes. Um, uh, Sam uh, heard about it first through his digital ad company in part four, a uh, uh, person, your your boss. My uh, boss, Roger, told me about it. Yeah, and and then Kevin wrote the song and like, 45 minutes. I hadn't seen the movie since it originally came out in mm -hmm. you know, 2006, I think it was. 
And uh, the first song that really popped out, or the first song placement, was that uh, Chef Gusto's Anyone Can Cook uh, monologue. I was like, this is the perfect voice for a song. And I literally wrote it in 40, 45 minutes, sat down at the piano and um, put on a chef hat and, and filmed it. And uh, when we posted it, it was, it was really on a lark. And the next day, uh, it had over a million hits. And, and then for some reason, we hit this zeitgeist moment because the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and CBS This Morning called Within 24 Hours. And something had really happened where this thing just exploded. And I think partly was because I have a big Disney following with, uh, with the show Jesse and, and people just started talking about it. And then the CB Productions decided, called me and said, we're interested in doing this as an Actors Fund benefit concert. And so, uh, that kind of gave it even more momentum. And Kevin was the first person they called when they decided to actually produce it. Really? Um, uh, yeah, that he was the first actor they approached because we kind of basically, we, we kind of took the Ratatouille thing and because Kevin's song was the biggest song of the whole kind of trend, we kind of forced them to cast him. <laughs> so they could they really had no choice. Um, which kind of was really cool because he was in the prom on Netflix. So like mm -hmm. he had just come off the prom and then Ratatouille happened. So it was just kind of this great thing where the TikToks and the real world and his career were all kind of like colliding in this really perfect moment. And so I have a really big kitchen in our house. So we shot his number in my kitchen um, and a friend of mine who's a, a camera guy on The Walking Dead, he kind of helped because he was here on hiatus. And so um, the three of us shot the whole number in the living room. And then the director of Ratatouille kind of gave some like direction notes that she wanted us to to do. But it was it was just the three of us shooting this whole thing here. <laughs> and it was like the night before Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was right as Christmas was happening. and. And then it came out on New Year's Day. So like the holidays were basically consumed by Ratatouille. <laughs> how, was, uh, how was the feedback from all that? I know a lot of people that I knew in my personal life were really excited about the, the Actors Fund fundraiser for it. Yeah, well, I think we all needed something. <laughs> we needed a little musical theater at the end of uh, what was really one of the most craziest years we've all lived through. and. And especially people who love the theater, we we were craving um, being in an audience and watching a musical, and uh, it provided that. It was also the first crowdsourced musical ever done, um, and uh, TikTok really exploded during uh, 2020. And it it was wonderful how they they threw in because people posted there were over 100, 150 different. Um, videos of songs, costume designs, uh, set designs, um, and the way they incorporated that all into the final uh, presentation was so moving to me. I, it was, it really was a total community uh, coming together to create this uh, beautiful piece that that ultimately raised two million dollars, over two million dollars. Two million dollars for the actors. Yeah. Wow. You, you mentioned a little bit about how lots of people were craving live theater. And as an actor who has been performing in on stage and on screen, I'm curious for you, what's, what's the difference between doing those different mediums? Well, um, the, the biggest difference is you have control over your final performance in a theater. Um, your, your, your opening night performance is gonna be the same the next night and the next night. Whereas if I do a movie or a television show, I don't know what is going to end up on the cutting room floor. Um, I could have had a brilliant moment and it's gone because the sound wasn't right or the lighting wasn't right or, mm -hmm. or, or it's just running too long. I had in the prom, 
um, about 70% of my performance uh, was cut, but a lot of people, Andrew Reynolds had a whole number, half a number cut. And um, so, you know, it, it has to be economically told the story. And sometimes you end up on the cutting room floor. You've done a bunch of kind of iconic to uh, iconic roles to like a certain group of people that they these musicals like Susicle and the Adams Family get done a lot regionally. And I'm curious if you've ever gone to see any of those productions. I have. I haven't seen an Adams Family yet, but I've seen probably over 30 productions of Susicle. Well, it's always very moving. What's it like? Is it weird seeing other people do a role that you originated? Um, no, I think it's wonderful because everyone has their own interpretation of it. And, um, and because it's all um, usually high school age and under uh, doing it, uh, it's very moving to me because it reminds me of um, doing the shows in high school that I did. Um, and I mean, if, if, if I got to meet, you know, a person who originated a role in a show I did in high school, my mind would have just been blown. So I love, I really love going to see amateur productions. It's really fun. And I'm looking forward to going to an Adams Family production. Oh, I hope, I, I love that musical. I, I keep wanting to see one locally and I just, it never works out. And I'm so excited to see one when they all come back here after all of this ends. I've gotten messages from about 30 different schools and community theaters where their production was canceled. Oh. But it's in the top five of the, uh, licensed um, Broadway shows now. Susical and Adam Stanley are like the two top licensed shows, which is funny that he was in both. <laughs> does, that, does that give you like an ego? How does that feel? Uh, it, 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 it makes me proud of the work we did. Um, it's, it's interesting because both shows were not very well reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Adam's Family was a populist hit, but not a critical hit. And uh, Susical was, you know, we only ran six, seven months and, and it lost all of its money, but they have since made a lot of money back. Uh, you know, we just had a little 20th anniversary Zoom call of the, of the original cast. So um, over those 20 years, they've, they've, I'm sure they've made their money back. I have one question, one final question that I think is going to tie all of this together, and that is, what superhero would you most like to see in a musical and why is it not Spider-Man? <laughs> well, that's actually funny you asked that because Kevin and I went to the very first preview of the Spider-Man musical. Really? The first produced show ever that anyone ever saw, we were there. And it was my Christmas present that year because I wanted to see it so bad. And he pulled some strings and got us tickets. And we went to that production. And it was the one where the guy got stuck for like oh, an hour no. and a half hanging upside down. And I remember um, Michael Riedel, the, the Broadway uh, critic and voice, kind of gossipy voice, came up and was like, Kevin Chamberlain, I see that you're here at, at <laughs> Spider-Man's first preview. And he cared to comment. And Kevin was like, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great moment. Um, but for me, my my favorite would be, uh, I would love to see Iceman in a musical. I want to see that coming out. I want songs really bad. Uh, uh, and I already saw Spider-Man, so that's why it's Iceman. <laughs> One of my favorite musicals is uh, It's a Bird, It's a Plane, It's Superman. And um, I think that's right for a revival and a re- a re rewriting uh, to update it. I agree. Um, thank you guys so much for doing this. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having us. Um, before I let you go, is there anything you guys would like to plug or places you want our audience to find you on social media? Well, um, if you are not familiar with our TikTok, it's, uh, I mean, if you just do put, put in Kevin Chamberlain, I'll come up. It's Chamberlain underscore Kevin. Uh, and um, we also, I'm on Instagram and um, I'm going to be in an uh, Amazon TV show called Outer Range starring Josh Brolin and Lily Taylor. And that'll be probably coming up at the end of the year. And I'm, I'm Sam Kite. I'm on 
all the social medias as well. Um, and I'm currently developing uh, an animated series called Hibernation. Um, it's kind of an adult swim type series and and then developing some other content, but also just I do I do all Kevin's TikToks. So uh, hope we have a couple fun collaborations with other TikTokers coming up. Um, so it's it's kind of actually fun because I I I really like a lot of these TikTok influencers and creative voices that are really coming out of nowhere. They're not you know Hollywood people. They're just kind of normal editors and special effects people and dancers that, you know who are actually able to like make something at, uh, in their like living rooms. And so we're collaborating with some people that we find really talented and cool, and they're coming to us, which is even cooler to see so many talented people wanting to collaborate with us. So look out for some fun collaborations soon. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I hope you both have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. Take care.